So yesterday we spoke about why authority is not the same as inclusion. Now, authority helps you get noticed. There's no doubts about it. But trust is what decides whether the AI systems actually can use your content. Now, today we want to show you like how that idea completely changes the content creation. Because traditionally what we do for content, the SEO team researches on the keywords and then they also look into various queries which already people are using to find the current website and then there is a content outline given and then the content gets created. Now, what we are going to do today is not SEO content, right? We are going to try to look at how decision content could be created. Now, the AI systems, as we discussed a few episodes back, like they do not start with keywords. They start with situations based on the prompt that is given, right? Because what is a prompt? Prompt, prompt is an instruction given to the decision system. So when we created the first article for the Megalist project, so we did not ask like what keyword should we target? We asked something which is much more uncomfortable. Uh, the idea is to look at how do we niche down? Like what would... Imagine a situation, okay, like, um, you know, since it's a mega list project, so the first list we thought of doing is the CRM list itself, right? Uh, let's imagine uh, what would someone inside a clinical research organization, a CRO, actually ask when they are trying to choose a CRM for their business. Not as a marketer, not as an SEO, but as a business leader. Now, here is a, an important reality that you need to understand that there is no prompt volume data available anywhere. Most of the tools that they show the prompts and the volume, they are all like search volumes, the Google search volumes. They are not prompt volumes. Uh, there is no tool out there that tells you how many people asked a question in ChatGPT, how often a CRO leader typed a prompt, which prompt is trending. So that data does not exist because the amount of prompts that is going to be there is going to be huge. So if someone is claiming that they are optimizing for high volume prompts, uh, they are simply guessing. Instead of guessing, uh, you know, we did something very simple. So we spoke to a few people in the industry. While writing this article, uh, I shared a list of possible questions with someone working inside a CRO, a good friend of mine. He's not a, a SEO practitioner or something. I asked him a basic question uh, like, you know, which of the questions or the prompts do you actually put into ChatGPT or Gemini when you're evaluating a CRO? Now, the prompts he immediately acknowledged were uh, questions like um, what CRM works best for a mid-size CRO. Now, which CRM do CROs usually use for business development? Like what CRM is suitable for CRO dealing with sponsors and biotech clients? Now, these are not keywords. These are like decision prompts. So we changed how we structure the content. Based on that, that interaction with my friend, uh, I've understood that structuring this content should be based on how the decision tree works. Right. So instead of keyword clusters, we used common scenarios. Now, each scenario directly answers a real question a CRO leader might ask. Now, let me show you briefly. Let me share my screen. Yeah, here we go. Notice how the article starts. It doesn't start with tools. You know, here is the best tools and all. It starts with context. Again, a full disclosure here. This is not something which is the working content. Okay. This is an experiment we are doing. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't work, don't blame me on it. Right. Now let's look at what are the problems that trigger a business leader to get a CRM. Usually long sales cycles, relationship led business, you know, multiple stakeholders will be there. So this context is important. Now, because AI systems, they don't just retrieve the content. They evaluate whether an explanation fits a situation. So as you scroll, you notice something else, right? We don't rank tools. We don't say best. We explain the trade-offs, like when something works, when it breaks. Now, AI systems trust this content. And I'm just scrolling as I say this, but yeah. So the AI systems trust content that admits the limitations more than the content that pretends as though it's a one solution that fits everyone. So now this structure mirrors like how decisions are actually made. People don't choose software by by reading the rankings. They choose by eliminating the risk. That's what this content does. And this is the shift from SEO content to a search engineering content. Now, like I said, this is an experiment. So this is not like an SOP, which uh, this thing, there is no official SOP uh, by any of the 
um, you know, AI systems out there. Uh, this is just an experiment, right? So tomorrow uh, we'll talk about what happens next. Now that this content is ready, uh, we will see, uh, we'll post it. And I'm I'm not going to be promising anything big or I'm not expecting, uh, expecting anything suddenly to happen because this is a brand new domain. Just yesterday it was booked. So what happens when you know, AI starts using the information but does not mention your brand, right? This is something which uh, we will see tomorrow. And uh, this confusion is where most people lose trust in AI visibility. So we'll start exploring that tomorrow. Yeah, see you then.